Hey guys, Poor here with another video, this time ranking every single League of Legends champion teaser. There are two types, champion teaser trailers and champion gameplay trailers. I scoured the League of Legends YouTube channel and went through every video they posted and came up with 67 total cinematics. I consider factors such as how well the visuals hold up, how inventive they are in comparison to the others made around that time, whether the teaser accurately portrays the champion through either ability reveals or lore reveals, and a handful of other categories that I'll go through when explaining my ranks. This video will be long enough as it is, so let's get started with number 67. Congrats, you essentially just watched the whole trailer. 17 seconds of a ring dropping with slight zoom in. In its defense, it's an old cinematic, and it's also a rework trailer which sometimes gets less effort. Whatever the excuse is though, this trailer is still a fat sack of nothing, landing in the F tier. What was it like growing up in the shadow of such a beautiful and popular champion? Don't you find me... beautiful? Unlike the Tarek teaser, I actually don't hate this one. It's sadly just a product of its time. As the very first champion teaser ever released, there wasn't exactly a massive budget or inspiration behind it. It definitely has not aged well though, and is pretty hard to watch nowadays, but it still has a certain charm to it that puts it above the Tarek trailer. You can tell the crew had fun with this one. Still not enough to break into D tier, but an honorable high F for Cassio. This is a teen rated game, alright? We are rated T for teen. There could be children listening to this. Can we just get back to the interview? While I had praise for the Cassio trailer, I have zero praise for this abomination known as the Ophelios trailer. It starts off with the preseason tag since it was literally just attached to the preseason video, and then we get a guy vomiting followed by a horrible showcase of the weapons. Look at Infernum, he legit does nothing with it. How are we supposed to understand what Infernum does from that? How are we supposed to understand anything other than Barf Boy has five weapons? On top of that, the visuals are mediocre in comparison to the other trailers, both past and future. Easy D tier. Come on. Here we get our first gameplay trailer, and it's not good. Many future gameplay trailers have compelling narratives, good scripts, strong gameplay, strong sound design, or other high quality features. The Evelyn rework has muted sound effects that leave her gameplay with no impact, an underwhelming theme with the only good shot being her disappearing around a corner, and close-up shots of her terrible, terrible in-game model. Definitely one of the least attractive champion teasers out there. I have faced many self-proclaimed gods. This Pantheon rework trailer was one of only two trailers done like this where the format showed all of the abilities in a mini champion spotlight-esque style followed by the standard gameplay clips. The issue is that by gameplay clips, I mean gameplay clip, and by gameplay clip, I mean he misses half of his abilities and uses the other half incorrectly. Also, the structure of the video plays like a mobile game trailer. D tier. <laughs> Topping the D tier is the other mini spotlight teaser, which has a lot of the same flaws as the Pantheon trailer, including only having one gameplay clip. Luckily for this one, at least the gameplay has some cool ability icons to send off the horde video structure that we never saw again, luckily. Okay, this one is unironically one of my favorite trailers. Tell me that the basic outline dance into dramatic PNG of the Monkey King is not absolutely hilarious. If this was a subjective tier list, Wukong is an easy S for meme quality alone. On this tier list though, it's literally just the Wukong dance into an edgy wallpaper. Scrapes into C tier because D tier is reserved for teasers that actively do things wrong, but it's the very bottom of C tier. He took an axe and split himself in two. So he would always have a friend. Much like the Tarek teaser, nothing really happens in this one. Unlike the Tarek teaser, the script is decent and the two visuals shown are pretty. The Orn trailer is unfortunately one of the ones with a lot of missed potential. We get to see some cinematic shots of Orn's character model, Volibear preparing an army, and then Orn casting his ultimate against Volibear's ferocious charge. If this was done with modern animation, or even any form of animation Riot has used in the past, it could have been a banger. In practice though, the character models look incredibly clunky, especially the extremely bland Ornold. Allow me to demonstrate. The Renata teaser also reeks of missed potential. It has many of the modern aspects that make newer champion gameplay trailers so good, such as cinematic shots, panning shots, a narrative, dialogue, and full ability reveals, but the Renata one misses the mark in many ways. The first ultimate cast is shown extremely underwhelming, as some of the people who are ulted just survive anyway. 
Many of the better gameplay trailers will heavily over-exaggerate damage or impact to create more hype and intimidation within the trailer, but we watch Renata cast her ult onto turret on three people, and then two of them be pretty much fine afterwards. It would have sold the point much better if Renata had ulted, let's say, a fed Jinx, and then we get to see Jinx completely annihilate her entire team because of it. The mechanics of the trailer simply just don't hold up as well, as we can also legit see Renata missing skill shots in the clips. Even in the final shot with the slow motion auto attacks, the champions chosen for the shots have pitiful auto attack animations to showcase, which leaves the scene feeling pretty boring. Renata stays in bottom C tier. This is a short but decent shot showing off Scion's new rework visuals. Nothing important to note at all, and a lack of ability reveals or real storytelling drags this one down, but the visuals we get serve their purpose well and do their job. The monsters of today will be the heroes of tomorrow. Similar to Scion, Swain gets an extremely short trailer to show off the rework visuals. This time though, we get an epic shot of Swain's new ultimate before the doors slam shut. I have raised jungles. Again, another short teaser with mostly just visuals. This one clues us into the fact that Kiana uses different elements, which is enough to get you excited to play the champion. Senna got two different teaser trailers, so don't worry, we won't be seeing the other one for a long time. Anyway, this is also in the same vein of short visual trailers, this one giving us cool shots of both Lucian and Thresh looking down on a cloaked figure that we would assume to be Senna at the time of release. This one also has a bit of lore implications that push it up. I don't need instructions. That's your job, book. Yumi also got a short visual teaser trailer, but this one doesn't actually show you what Yumi is, and instead clues you in with her dialogue and the imagery. Pretty cool. Oh, mark this page, book. No master, but lots of fish. Big fish. We once danced in harmony with the land. Aurelia. Also gets a short visual teaser, but this one is equipped with some great lore dialogue and a super pretty mural art pan shot that definitely matches the vibes of Aurelia. I'm especially a fan of the final visual of Aurelia having a lot of blades, as this was the new direction the design team hinted at taking before the trailer was released. My ancestors built Nazuma. Away from the Ascended and other would-be rulers. Similar to Aurelia, we get Kasanti himself giving us his own dialogue, but this one is equipped with the modern animation we know and love. We also get to see his extremely imposing Tonfa's leaning against the wall, which clues us into his design. Alright, I swear this is the last one for a while. It's another short visual teaser. This one has a lot of cool aspects to it though, such as the pulsing blade showing that it's sentient, and then a big reveal of the full design of the new Aatrox. While this trailer has some perks like cool music and modern structure, it's weighed down by a lot of the same flaws that Renata and Evelyn had. The sound effects of Gwen's abilities feel muted, the mechanics of the combos mostly don't hold up today, and we even see missed skill shots as the very first skill Gwen throws is sidestepped. There isn't really even time for Gwen to show off as we only get about 30 seconds of gameplay total. Pretty mediocre compared to the others coming up. What are you? We are the Spear of Vengeance. As the first true fully animated cinematic on the list, the Callista trailer is quite the disappointment. In its defense, it is fully animated, and it tells a story, and it's very very old. However, Callista's cinematic goes for the fear trope, where we see a character get wrecked by the champion in question, and Callista's is easily the least scary. We aren't even given a good grasp of the victim's motives or personality, meaning we can't get invested in his emotions like with the Fiddlesticks and Rek'Sai trailers for example. The kill scene itself also isn't that great, as it showcases Callista's auto attack, and that's it. The length is also bloated by 30 seconds of funky smoke at the beginning, but that's just a minor nitpick. Overall, enough to make the top half of C tier, but nowhere near the B tier cinematics. Why have we wings, sister, if not to fly? Why do we have feet if not to tread upon the soil? This one was released when Kale and Morgana received duo updates, Morgana getting a visual update, and Kale receiving a full rework. The storytelling elements are good with the sister duo, and the back and forth structure is a clever way to display every element of the new updates. However, Kale's in-game model close-up is horrendous, and many of the gameplay clips of Kale are just boring auto attacks. We get to sit there and watch Kale hit level 5 melee autos. How fun! At least a shot of Kale's new ultimate was decent. Grace in every step. Power in every turn. Aurelia's trailer is okay. 
The opening shot is underwhelming due to the in-game model's clay mobile game appearance, and the sound effects feel very dull, similar to the Evelyn trailer. However, this one has some good stuff too, such as the mechanics being pretty good even by modern standards, and a decently pulled off theme about Noxus champions invading Ionia. Which path shall we take? The Kane teaser is short but sweet. You get some dialogue of Kane and Rost arguing, with an animation of an Ash being hunted for Blue Kane, and a Scion being hunted for Red Kane. Good visuals, and gets the point of the champion across. Nothing to blow your mind or get you going really crazy though. Kiana's gameplay trailer does a few things well, such as showcasing her personality well and displaying the traits of the three elements in her kit. The trailer also has issues though, such as the ultimate shots being bad and the overhead shot of the 1v1 against Camille feeling kind of out of place. Overall not bad for a gameplay trailer, but plenty of aspects to work on, which brings us to the top of C tier. Now we're getting into the B tiers, and these are the ones I would go out of my way to watch again for one reason or another. Other than the godly Wukong trailer, of course. The Kled teaser is essentially just one long joke where Kled and Skarl are reuniting on the battlefield. Pretty funny execution in my opinion, and many of the slow motion and frozen shots are well done. It is just one joke though, and while you get a grasp at the two are apparent game, that's really about all you understand about Kled's gameplay from this trailer. Never turn your back on the sea. As a narrative continuation of the Pike teaser that we'll get into later, the opening of this cinematic is pretty good. I like how you can feel the impact of his abilities, like the dash and the invisibility. What I don't like is how many times Pike has to auto-attack to finish off the kills, which definitely slows down the pace of the video at times. I'm also definitely not a fan of the final scene where he ults three people, as it 100% does not hold up mechanically in modern times, feeling almost like a bronze player is piloting the champ. Overall though, this trailer highlights a lot of the cool aspects of Pike's kit with some decent visuals to go with it. The hardened live. That's what they taught me. What they forced down my throat! The Rel teaser does a good job at establishing her lore, personality, ferromancy, and mount mechanic. The scene where she transitions from heavy armor to metal horse is pretty cool. However, the visuals definitely don't stack up to other modern champion cinematics, and the final pan shot not actually capturing Rel riding towards Noxus for any more than two seconds feels like a pretty weird screenwriting decision in my opinion. I wish they had panned up slower so we get to see her riding off into the sunset a little longer. And the cold fury of the Phoenix! The Uda rework is a tale of two stories. Firstly, we have the really cool direction the trailer decided to take, rotating between Udyr meditating and reflecting on its different forms, while the gameplay then displays the form in action. It's a great concept, and we even get some really cool visuals with it. Then we have the second part, which is the fact that Udyr has one of the most boring kits in the game from a visual standpoint, meaning it's really hard to make him look cool. It's the pike auto attack problem, only multiplied tenfold. Credit where it's due though, they did really well for what they had. Does this count as one of the jump scare horror trailers? Because it definitely feels like one. Ivern's trailer actually packs quite a lot of neat stuff into it. Even though it's just one slow moving picture, it shows off multiple of his abilities, such as clues into what his passive is, his Q root, and his W bush growth. It also shows you his personality and role in the world of Runeterra. At the end of the day though, it is basically just one fancy picture with minor animations. Samira's trailer is another one with a pretty cool concept. It kicks off with a really nice cinematic with a super powerful feeling gunshot, and then showcases a style bar while performing different combos of all varieties. My main problem with this one is that the ultimate feels pretty underwhelming in this trailer. There's no fancy zoom in, no cool effects, no pan shots, no mini animation, no nothing. Just the basic ultimate. Unfortunate. No matter what planet, no matter what galaxy, Another simple one, but this one hits hard. We knew Celestial Beings existed before, but it had never been quite visualized at the level that this trailer went to. It gives me the same vibes as the opening to A New Hope, where you see the giant spaceship flying across the screen, only for it to be engulfed by the shadow of an even bigger monster-sized ship above it, only this time it's the visual of Aesol's massive hand sweeping across the screen to reveal his even more massive face in the distance. While we don't get to see much other than that one cool visual, it's definitely one hell of a visual that skyrockets it past all the others clumped in that C tier. The Akali trailer checks most of the boxes. It has a neat intro scene that ties into her lore and personality. The presentation and structure of the video are very good, and it makes you excited to try out her new rework. The place where this one falls flat on its face is when you look at the mechanics of the combos in the video, as they haven't aged very well. 
And thus, she failed to recognize when that demon's jaw unhinged. This one is definitely interesting, and I could easily see why someone would dislike it and move it lower down. In essence, it's three and a half minutes of dialogue with very minimal visuals and only one champion design reveal at the very end. For me though, I absolutely love the story being told, and I think Kench's voice and delivery are great. Even with the lack of champion design or gameplay teasers, I still think the personality and lore building are enough to get it into the B tier. Mother Tree is dying. There's a chance I could be biased with this one since Lilia is one of my favorite champions to pilot in-game, but this one does have a lot of stuff going for it. I enjoyed most of the visuals, especially the sections with different Spirit Blossom skins. The narrative is also great for explaining Lilia's personality and place within Runeterra, and we get hints into her gameplay design with her constant mention of dreams. My main issue with this one is actually pretty subjective, as I think her character model looks pretty unpolished, kind of like a clay figure almost. I could see this one higher or lower for other people though, and I'm kind of curious what the general sentiment on this one is. This one adopts a lot of the current gameplay trailer features, including a cinematic start and ending that connect with each other, and smooth flowing gameplay shots with dialogue over top. This one definitely has some issues though. Needless character model definitely is not suited for close-up shots, as her proportions are completely off. Every shot that includes her hands or neck are completely cursed, and I also have a big problem with how they showcase her ultimate, as she flash ults three people, one of which is a misfortune with critically low health, and then none of them die from it. As mentioned before, I prefer gameplay showcases where damage is over-exaggerated for dramatic effects to make abilities feel more impactful. I remember the day I died. While Pike's teaser may play out as just a 40 second fancy PowerPoint presentation, it's chock full of insane visuals and one of the better told lore stories in the dialogue. Every single line Pike delivers here is a gut punch, and it's insane how invested into a character I can get in under a minute. Unfortunately, it is still just short visual eye candy, so I can't give it too much credit. The Talia trailer is pretty decent. The visuals are great, especially the shot of what we think is the sun being turned into a Sharima disc as Talia gets closer. We also get to see some of Talia's abilities being teased, like her passive and her ultimate. While we do get these nice qualities with the Talia returning home plot, I do think there was a bit of wasted potential in the concept. I'm imagining a teaser where Talia is in a sparring match against Yasuo where we really get to see her earth power shine, and I can't help but feel like what we got doesn't lean into the elemental powers enough to hype people up for the champion. Nice. This trailer does some things really well and other things kind of mediocre. The visuals are stunning. The shots of the void butterflies being devoured by the creepy wall and then the void fish bursting out is great, and Belveth's initial appearance is fantastic. The animation is also up to modern standards begging for some great eye candy. My favorite part of the trailer is when Belveth blinks forward to appear in front of Kaizo, which is a great way to showcase her cue in an extremely terrifying way. I have two main problems with this trailer though. Firstly, I can't help but feel like this trailer actually ruined the world building of the Void a little for me, because this place looks a lot less intimidating than it should in my opinion. The second place is that I feel like the reveal of Belveth's true form is a bit lacking. I wish she had delivered her last line of dialogue first, and then turned it into the true form paired with some enhanced sound effects. Instead, the sound effects of the transformation are dulled, while the dialogue takes priority, which lessens the impact for me and overall drags this trailer away from A tier. I have crossed through death. Viego's teaser trailer is in fact just the Ruination cinematic, which is also one of the more hyped up events League has done in recent memory. While the animation itself is pretty clean for the most part, it feels like Viego is unfortunately splitting time with promotion for the actual event itself, which takes away from the Viego part of the Viego teaser. I'm trying to judge this on its champion teaser metrics, not complete cinematic metrics, and what we get from Viego himself is honestly pretty boring. When you're done watching the cinematic, you're not exactly caring about Viego's kit or playing him in-game, which is what the point of the champion teaser is at the end of the day. Pretty cool, but not enough for A tier. This one is just more visual candy, but I really enjoy how it's presented. A lot of the times we'll get dialogue from the champion in question, but we don't get dialogue from this one because Gwen is a doll who can't talk. Instead, the story is told through the beautiful sewn artwork where we can still get a firm grasp of Gwen's lore, motives, and place in Runeterra. The constant visuals of strings, needles, and scissors do a great job at keying us in on the kit theme, and the final visual of Gwen turning into a living doll is pretty compelling to end on. I'm not as emotionally invested in this one as I am with some of the other visual candy teasers though, so Gwen stays in B tier. Galio's Rubric gameplay trailer is absolutely everything I could ever want from a gameplay perspective. While Galio's abilities in-game feel kind of simple and underwhelming, this trailer does a phenomenal job at creating impact. 
The shot of Galio's E into Q, the shot of his tornado colliding, and the amazing shot of his ultimate make for what I would consider to be top tier gameplay teaser shots. However, this trailer lacks the same level of storytelling and cinematics as some of the other gameplay trailers incorporate, so I've got to dock Galio for it. The Vex trailer is really good all around. The jokes landed for me, the abilities felt like they had impact, and some of the gameplay shots are really good, especially the introduction of the ultimate. This one does lack any sort of big moment or crazy wow factor though, meaning it's not the most memorable of the trailers. High B seemed right for this one. This one could be controversial, as I'm pretty sure a lot of people enjoy this one. I do too, and I think the personalities and chemistry of Zaya and Rakan shine really well here. Some of the shots are really great, especially the one of Rakan using his W, and I would be remiss to not mention the ending which encapsulates the two characters perfectly, with Zaya being willing to sacrifice herself to save nature, and Rakan being willing to sacrifice himself for Zaya. Pretty touching stuff. Where this one loses me a bit is with the actual design of Saya and Rakan models themselves, with both looking a bit dated and Rakan especially appearing much more wrinkly than he does in the splash art. It's a nitpick for sure, but it's noticeable enough for me that it takes away from my overall enjoyment. <laughs> Finally, with the last of the B tiers, I've got Zeri's gameplay trailer. The opening and closing cinematics do a great job at capturing Zeri's personality, and the gameplay itself does a good job at showcasing her E and ult specifically. The shots done for both of those were executed really well. What I wish could have been done better is her Q in fights. If they had jacked up her attack speed a bit, the fights could have had much better pacing. I also wish they had shown her Empowered W at some point, as I could see a world where a visual for that Empowered W would be really cool. But true power is only found in the cosmos! We're into the A tiers, and these are the ones I really look upon fondly. I won't have much negatives to say here. We start with the Aesol Rework trailer, and this one does everything the first one does well in the opening shot, followed by a great series of gameplay shots. I love how much the damage is overemphasized, as you can see just how strong the trailer makes his champion feel to play. Even if it's not realistic by game standards, it hypes you up for the champion, and that's really the main goal at the end of the day. The shot of the ultimate especially is fantastic. However, I think the shooting star revealing the champion model does look a bit derpy, and the storytelling definitely isn't blowing my socks off or anything. This one is old but gold. In my opinion, the very first time Riot really truly nailed a champion cinematic. What impresses me about this one so much is that if you pay close enough attention, you can see how limited the budget of this one was, but it still delivers so much impact. You can see the genuine fear in the human's eyes, the shot of the laser is powerful, the dialogue is creepily perfect, and the big reveal of Velkaz's design is super memorable. While it is essentially just a dripped out slideshow, it does the absolute best with what I had to work with. Look at it! It's magnificent! For such a complex kit, this trailer does a really good job at showing you how every mechanic works in a clear and crisp way. The gameplay shots of this trailer are really good. The mechanics also hold up as well, with the shot displaying the revive mechanic involving a redirected ultimate grapple around a turret. I'm also a big fan of the cinematics at the beginning and the end, and I'd happily put this up as an example of a great gameplay teaser. While I can't exactly comment on how well the mechanics of this one hold up since the champion isn't even released yet, what I can comment on is how well this trailer makes me want to play Nefiri. They make her W look like an absolutely disgusting ability to pilot, and they also use a lot of quick cuts to hide how long it actually takes to kill a target, which I appreciate after seeing the actual damage numbers in other gameplay. The cleaner you can make it look in the gameplay trailer, the better. Speaking of clean, can we talk about how good that first shot of her ultimate looked? It was short, but it was awesome. Mad props to the Nefiri trailer here. Tradition. All shackles for the ignorant. We're now into three gameplay trailers in a row, and the pattern is starting to become pretty obvious. Cool cinematics displaying the character's personality and lore? Check. Enticing visuals that really enhance the abilities of the champion? Check. For Silas specifically, I love the attention to detail in the prison cell, especially the spiral tally marks and I dig the loose Demacia theme in the gameplay clips, specifically the final shot being of a Luxold. While the Renata trailer tunneled too hard into Piltover champions to the point of the cinematic shots being detrimental, the Silas team made sure to discard the Demacia theme when they needed to to showcase the coolest ult Silas could steal, which ups the quality of the trailer for me. All we need to start the fire 
is a single spark. Mm. And you thought we were stopping at three in a row. If I put my Yumi hatred aside for a bit, I can appreciate just how well this trailer was made. I think the cinematic is pretty cute, and I love the way they display how her kit works in a clear way. Attaching to super mobile champions was a great way at showing off the W mechanic, and the big team fight was shot really well in my opinion, with Yumi actively vocalizing what she was doing in a way that didn't feel forced, but also helped with the clarity of the situation. And she gets her fish at the end, what's not to like? Of all of the A tier and above picks that I have, this one is easily the most biased take I have. This trailer is super old, but I think the 2D animation still holds up well in modern times. I also think this trailer does a really good job at establishing a threat, and showing how Braum's personality and arsenal are able to dissipate the threat. Also, Poro! Me for real! Look how adorable he is! This one, similar to the Braum trailer, is a very old 2D animated teaser. Remember what I said about Callista's trailer and why I didn't like how emotionally detached it made us feel from the characters? Well, take that complaint and throw it out the window here, as we get to see the horror happen from the perspective of the victims the entire time, and I can actually feel the fear that the characters are feeling. Speaking of which, this teaser overall does a really good job at making Rek'Sai feel super intimidating, and it completely checks out with how her playstyle operates in-game as well. This was the gold standard back then, and it aged like fine wine. My fire looked so scary, it rushed off into the jungle, never to be seen again. Pretty amazing, right? Similar to Yumi, I absolutely cannot stand Milio in-game. However, if I once again tear myself away from my biased hatred, I can see that this Milio trailer goes hard. Not only does it have a great opening and ending cinematic paired with excellent dialogue, but the gameplay clips do a fantastic job at showcasing the abilities. We get to see a Q knock a Terex on away. We get to see his heals and shields turn what looks like an impossible 1v1 into a win. We even get to see some of the more interesting uses of his ultimate, showing that it can cleanse an Urga ult. My favorite part of the trailer is when they execute this super cool continuous panning shot across the rift that scans over different Milio fights, and that's the kind of creativity that makes me want to put this as high as I did. They are here right now. And remember, we're gonna make them so proud. So I know a lot of people complain about Seraphine's marketing, but I'm going to put my foot down here and actually make a case for why I think Seraphine's marketing up to release is the best I've ever seen in a video game. The Sarah.Wave Instagram account was made months before anyone had any idea she had any connection to the game whatsoever. Her account was literally just the account of an indie musician trying to make it in the scene. As a musician myself, I feel like the account did a great job at depicting realistic struggles and growth over time. First we get to see her do a cover of a popular song, and then she releases work in progress instrumentals that again seem completely unrelated to the game. Whether or not you care about or even know about League of Legends, the Sarah.Wave profile was something any musician could organically relate to and connect with. They then suddenly slowly started to bring in ties closer to League, and when people started speculating that Seraphine was a champion, the work in progress instrumental turned out to be the instrumental for a KDA pop stars cover. I think this is a super unique and creative way to build the narrative that would lead her to being noticed by KDA and eventually collaborating with them. I really want to stress just how well thought out her career trajectory was to how an action musician might blow up in the real world. That's when we get to the Seraphine teaser, which while this may come as a surprise to you, is literally the KDA Mora music video. If we're judging off video quality alone, this one might even top some lists of the all-time Riot Games cinematics. The visuals and choreography in this video are bar none, and I personally think the song is a banger. Of course though, those aren't the qualifications of this video, and what I'm really looking at is how well the music video does as a champion trailer for Seraphine. And I still think it does a pretty good job. We get to see the massive payoff in her multi-month career building marketing campaign, and it's probably the best way Riot could have built up a champion based around singing in concerts. Seraphine's champion identity and personality are perfectly captured in this video. What isn't captured though is any clear indication of her playstyle or abilities, which is why I knocked this one down to A tier. We can tell she's got music based abilities of course, but we're still left guessing at how her kit actually operates in game. She receives absolute top marks everywhere else though. Oh, and for the record, I like to think I'm not biased here because I also think Seraphine is pretty annoying on the Rift. I hate her voice lines. Oh boy, the Jin teaser trailer. I know some of you probably wanted this one in top 10, top 5 even maybe, and I would agree that this trailer is epic. In terms of visual candy, it's the best of the best. The way we get to see how Jin visualizes his own murders is an amazing concept that was delivered to its fullest. The first time I saw it, I was dumbfounded by the mere spectacle of it. 
You have to put this teaser into perspective though, as it does lack hints to his core gameplay, and it's also still just a 1 minute eye candy piece. The rest of these trailers really go above and beyond to deliver the best they possibly could have, and the Jin teaser ends up falling behind in comparison. This is another one that I could see being in most people's top 5. In terms of providing a creepy atmosphere, it could be argued that this is the best teaser of the bunch. Unlike the Callista trailer, we get to see the situation unfold from the victim's POV, and it's enhanced past the Rek'Sai trailer because we get to see it in first person, so we can experience exactly what Soldier Number 2 is experiencing and build an emotional connection to the character even with no knowledge. In terms of showing off Fiddle's new rework, I think it does a great job. We get to see his passive and fear mechanics in action, and also fully figure out the direction of the rework visuals. The only thing keeping this one further down the list for me is I think that there's one more cinematic later that scares me just a little bit more. When this was released, I think everyone was high on the Bart train. For a lot of people, this was the best trailer that had been released at that point, with compelling storytelling combined with animation that has aged extremely well. I also view this trailer in extremely high regard, and I even had it at S tier initially on my stream. The Bard teaser does do a good job at highlighting the importance of Bard in the lore, which helps add to his character and gives people reasons to be excited for his release. However, I don't think this teaser is flawless, as it doesn't do much to key us into Bard's playstyle at all. I'm also personally not a fan of the random one-liner the old man spits out before dying, as it kind of ruins the flow of the scene as if we couldn't already tell. Nunu's rework is yet another case of a champion that I absolutely despise, having an excellent gameplay trailer. Unlike a lot of the other gameplay trailers, I think the Nunu and Willem champion models work really well here, and every ability is clearly showcased, even paired with little skits for each one. Speaking of skits, that's what brings this trailer over top of the other ones so far. The dialogue is super wholesome and helps you get invested in the personality of the two. In terms of storytelling through dialogue and visuals, this gameplay trailer is the best there is. It's not my favorite gameplay trailer though, as there's one more that slightly ekes out the title for that one. Ooh, pretty colors. Nico likes this jade. Nico has the best gameplay trailer, and it really wasn't ever a question for me. Everything about this trailer is almost perfectly done. The reference to Suicide Frog at the beginning is really funny and displays Nico's chameleon traits right from the start, and the shot of Aluxel leading into the first gameplay clip is a great transition. Speaking of the gameplay, every single play shown is aged perfectly and displays the peak of creativity for the champion. Bush strats, transformations, invisibility escapes, you name it and the trailer has a cool shot for it. The ultimate shot is picture perfect too, with a cool little cinematic zoom in followed by enough AP to actually one shot all the enemies it hits for that impact I keep asking for. To top it all off, the music fits seamlessly into the trailer the whole way through, and we even get blasted with nostalgia with the Winter Rift at the very end. If I had to nitpick anything, it would be that I wish Nami had died to Hecarim and that Nico had dodged the Lux Q, but that's literally it. Easy S tier gameplay trailer, and the model that every gameplay teaser should strive to be. In terms of the horror theme trailers, this one takes the cake for me. It's the Fiddlesticks teaser on crack. Just like that one, we're treated to a first-person POV of the main victims, and we're even given names this time, Fleg and Boggan. The two of them were brutally hunted down by Warwick, and it's terrifying. The way the set was designed was brilliant, especially the sequence where Boggan is knocked into the cable car, leaving behind the sharp metal that Fleg eventually cuts his hand on. Speaking of which, this is where the Warwick teaser sets itself above the Fiddle trailer for me, as we're given lots of hints to how Warwick's kit operates, such as his hunting for blood, the dramatic in-game sound effects, and the amazing shot of his ultimate at the end. It's crazy to me that this trailer came out 6 years ago, and for a rework at that. And also, while I'm not counting this since it isn't canon and was released after the teaser was, there's the bonus addition of sadness to this when you factor in the events of Arcane. Definitely a teaser deserving S tier. that extra time. They could fix any mistake. The Echo Teaser has a special place in my heart as it was the second League cinematic I'd ever seen. I was just getting into League around that time, and I watched A New Dawn followed by this one since it was the most recent trailer. Needless to say, the bar for cinematics was set pretty high for me right out of the gate. The Echo Teaser checks all the boxes with a compelling narrative, great dialogue, beautiful visuals, and many key pieces of how his kit operates in-game. 
What this trailer does specifically well is the narrative and dialogue, combining to create an insanely likable character. The visuals do a great job with pacing to show us Echo's thought process during the fight, and the final shot of Enduro being rewinded is a banger ending. And now for the moment you've all been waiting for, the most recent cinematic for the new champion, Nefiri. This was the teaser that inspired me to make this entire list in the first place, and this one goes extremely hard. The first 50 seconds of this trailer are some of the best visuals and sound design League cinematics have across the board, and every frame has a massive amount of impact. The next section running through the temple or monument or whatever it is is also cool, but the pacing is definitely noticeably slower. Still S tier level section though. My main gripe with this teaser that knocks it out of the top 5 is the final reveal of Nefiri's visuals. The problem isn't with Nefiri herself, but the background imagery. The wolf pack surrounding her has incredibly bland design, and the backdrop isn't anything special either, combining for a bit of a lackluster ending. All in all, this teaser starts off guns blazing but loses steam the longer it goes. Still worth a strong S. Similar to Seraphine having KDA more, I was pretty surprised to find out that the Get Jinx music video was released before Jinx was. I always assumed Jinx was one of Riot's popular poster children, and they made the music video to capitalize on it. Instead, Get Jinx came out two days before Jinx did, and serves as her champion teaser. With that knowledge in hand, this is one insane champion teaser. A full music video clipped with stellar 3D animation that still looks good today, and a huge stack of interesting and unique visuals. Since the song is effectively sung by Jinx herself, we get a great grasp of her personality from the lyrics and vocal tone, and this trailer also does a shockingly effective job at displaying her kit. The scene where she's fighting multiple robots shows us basically every gun she has in game, including Zapper, the Flame Chompers, Pow Pow, and Fishbones. Also, for what it's worth, we get a strong grasp of Jinx's incredibly unstable mental state. It's also cool to see how the vision of Piltover and Zon has changed over the years from this to Arcane, even if it doesn't have an impact on the ranking I gave it. The only thing stopping this one from rising higher for me is just that I think the four above it are way too good. When I was first making this ranking, I had an idea in my head of what the top 3 would be, and this Yone teaser was one of the ones I was thinking of. At 10 minutes, this is by far the longest teaser for any champion, and shows much of Yasuo's lore including Yone tracking him down when he was on the run, and then the two reuniting when the Azakana tried to devour Yasuo at the Spirit Blossom Festival. The visual clarity of this trailer does a fantastic job at differentiating between past and present by rotating between 2D and 3D animation, and we get to see Yone's in-game visuals and some abilities teased as well in the fight against the Azakana. Yasuo's lore is already some of the most interesting to read in the entire catalog of champions, and this animation really does the story justice. However, that's kind of where the main problem lies. This cinematic functions as a Yasuo lore video, and a Spirit Blossom event trailer, and Yone himself takes a bit of a backseat in the grand scheme of it. Still a great teaser for Yone, but I would imagine if the roles were reversed and Yone was already released and this was a Yasuo teaser, it might have had some more overall impact. This is the tale of a young hunter. His greatest battle. The second Kasanti teaser is easily the biggest surprise for me, and I find that the older this trailer gets, the more and more I like it. This is bar none the best 2D animation Riot has ever done, and the music is also one of the best songs they've ever released for a teaser as it fits the atmosphere perfectly. The narration does a fantastic job at subverting expectations and showing Kasanti's growth as a character, and it's definitely a nice change of pace to see a relationship ending on good terms for once. Some of the shots are wild, with anime-esque tropes and a dramatic sky split to finish it off. I find it shocking just how emotional this trailer made me feel in this short 2 minute runtime, and I heavily regret underrating it heading into this ranking. If I had to nitpick literally anything here, I would say that I wish the very last line of dialogue had been delivered a few seconds later and given more time to breathe, as opposed to immediately after the prior line. Very top of S tier for me, leaving just the two Z tiers remaining. And that is how the young hunter defeated his greatest monster. For anyone who's ever used the it's just a rework, less effort is fine excuse, this trailer is here to eradicate that. Not only is this for a rework, but it was a mini rework that featured a visual update and a new W and that's it. And for that extremely small rework we got a full scale music video for one of the best songs Riot has ever released, with a complete acid trip full of visuals to accompany it. This teaser tells the story of how Varus claimed his human body, and is equipped with the craziest series of scenes that any cinematic in League has to offer. I said the Nefiri trailer had a super stacked first 50 seconds, and I have the same sentiment here except that instead of the first 50 seconds, it's the entirety of the teaser apart from the more calm opening and ending shots. 
This trailer is everything I could have asked for in terms of characters as well, as we learn, even with no dialogue, about the relationship between the two protagonists, every emotion they're experiencing, and the full, complete role of the Darken. As for negatives, there is an argument to be made that this teaser doesn't display Varus' gameplay at all, but I would defend against that because Rework didn't change how the kit plays at all, and instead really only needed to show off the new visuals. In all fairness, this is just a mini rework, and they very easily could have made the entire teaser be just the last 30 seconds revealing Varus in his full glory, but we were instead treated to an amazing music video chock full of the best visuals and a compelling story. It's still not the best League has to offer in terms of cinematics though, as that title goes to... Senna's second teaser is that good. It's the payoff everyone had been waiting for, as we've known about Senna's existence and her lore ever since the brief dialogue and visuals he got in Lucian's Champion theme video 9 years ago. All in all, there's probably like 5 different cinematics that were building up to Senna's release over the years, and we're immediately rewarded for following them all as this teaser opens up with the ending shot from the 2018 season kickoff cinematic. In terms of fight choreography, Lucian vs Thresh is the best we've ever seen Rai animate, with even the slightest of details being perfect. First we get Lucian's rage-filled shots, then as one of them hits the lantern, we see Lucian's demeanor shift dramatically as he then tries to collect himself and aim only for the lantern in an attempt to free Senna. When Lucian is knocked aside by Thresh, we can see his two guns fly off in different locations, in which both play roles later on, the first being used to stab the lantern, and the second being used when Lucian is knocked later when the lantern explodes. It's really just neat to see how much attention to detail the animators put into this one. When Senna herself appears, the visual is jaw-dropping. We don't know whether she's good or bad, or whether her mind has been corrupted or not, and the green visuals surrounding her keep us guessing all the way to the reveal of her massive gun, which by the way is one of the best weapon designs they've ever come out with in my opinion. The shot where Senna shoots through Lucian is flawless, and a perfect way to showcase how her kit actually works in game. In fact, pretty much every visual here is flawless. The first time I saw this teaser, I had goosebumps, and I still got goosebumps watching it again 3 years later. If there's a way to top this one, you'll have to ask someone else because I definitely don't know how to. And with that, that's the entire full list of champion teasers ranked from 67 to 1 and put on a tier list. This was a lot of fun to make, but it was also really time consuming, so if you enjoyed, leaving a like really helps out. I stream on Twitch sometimes, and I also might stream on Kick in the future, so be sure to check those out. In fact, I streamed every one of these cinematic reactions on Twitch as well, and will keep using streaming platforms for other future videos, such as a potential world's opening ceremony ranking that I want to do. I also have a Discord server, links to all of those will be in the description. I also have a Ko-fi page, and any tips are highly appreciated. Thanks for watching as always, and I'll see you next time. Bye!